Good Monday morning. Welcome back to Begin in the Word. Today we look at Romans chapter 11, verses 16 through 24, where the apostle writes, If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the same nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? This, in a lot of ways, is the heart of Romans chapter 11. So much of the meaning of Romans chapter 11 cannot be understood apart from these verses, verses 16 through 24. Now, a lot of Bibles will put verse 16 with the previous section and start a new section here at verse 17. And that's fair because of the word but here that starts off a new section. But it is important to note that Paul is introducing a concept in verse 16 about these branches and about the root that informs the metaphor running from 17 through 24. So in my mind, we really have to group 16 in with this following section. Now, a lot of words have been used here in Romans chapter 11. Words like full inclusion. Paul's going to go on to use a phrase like partial hardening. And what is meant by these phrases, full inclusion, partial hardening? Is, is Paul saying by full inclusion that every Jew will be saved? He says, full, they're, they're full. what does their fullness mean? Back in the text we studied last week. This text here in verses 16 through 24 clarify that that is not what is intended, that the inclusion into the tree is conditioned on faith. So it does not refer to every Israelite. In fact, if Paul is saying that every Israelite will be saved. Does he not say in chapter 11, verse 25, when he refers to, with that same word, fullness, fullness this time though, of the Gentiles. Is he saying that every Gentile will be saved? Of course not. Not every Gentile is saved. Not every Jew is saved. When Paul uses words like partial and full, he is not referring to every Gentile being saved. By partial hardening, what he means is, is that, as he said, as we studied on Friday, they did not stumble in order that they might fall. The hardening is only partial. They still can come back to faith in Christ Jesus and be saved. That is the intended meaning by partial hardening. And Paul, of course, says he hopes that his ministry will save some of them. So the fullness of Israel being brought in could be achieved by some of the Jews coming to faith through the ministry of Paul to the Gentiles. So with that said, let's jump in here into this text that is, again, at the heart of Romans chapter 11. The first metaphor Paul brings up jumps back to Numbers chapter 15 when he says, if the dough offered as first fruits is holy. And in Numbers chapter 15, there is a law given about the a dough offering. And Paul uses that to start, but he quickly turns to this idea of a root and branches. And of course, it's the same idea. You make a, a batch, you make a dough, you take off some of that dough and offer it as first fruits. Well, what's true of that first fruit offering of dough is certainly true of the whole lump. They come from the same source. Similarly, if the root is holy, the branches which are connected to that root are holy as well. Now, what does Paul mean by these words? What does Paul mean by dough? Who is he describing as dough? And what does Paul mean by root? And conversely, what is meant by the lump and what are, is meant by the branches? There are three different options that you will come across in various interpretations of this text. The first goes back to origin and early church writers. The first says that the root is Jesus himself. Jesus is the root. Israel is attached to the root of Jesus, that nourishing root from which they receive their nutrition. That's option one. Option two 
this is held by various scholars, is that the first fruits and the root refer to the remnant of Jews that are saved, hearkening back to early portions of this chapter that refer to that remnant chosen by grace. And option three, which I believe is the correct option, and we'll see this as we continue in our study, is that the first fruits and the root are with reference to the patriarchs. If you look at ahead at Romans chapter 11, verse 28, Paul says that the Jews are beloved for the sake of the fathers in Romans chapter 11, verse 28. So Paul has in mind those patriarchs that to whom God made these promises. That's actually been a major theme for Paul in the book of Romans. Also in Galatians and all of Paul's writings, he carries in mind the promises made to Abraham, to those patriarchs. And so I think option three is correct. And we'll see what that means as we study. If the first fruits were holy, if the root was holy, the descendants from those, those Jews that came after them, were holy by proximity. They received teaching and nourishment spiritually because their fathers, the patriarchs, were holy and they passed that down to them. Now, as you study the Old Testament, you'll see that very frequently they were cut off or they were punished because of their sin and rebellion, but they were connected like a branches to the root, to their foundation, to the promises given to the patriarchs. So verse 16 should not be over-interpreted. We shouldn't try to read this to say, well, therefore every Jew is saved because after all, they are connected by the lump or they're connected by the branches to the original. That's not Paul's point. Paul's point is to set up a truth, a concept. And the concept is you receive your nourishment from the root, the root, the patriarchs, they were given the promise. And because Israel shot up from that root as an olive tree, they were connected and received blessing and benefit by that connection. But verse 17 says, goes on to clarify, some were broken off. So yeah, so long as the branches are connected to the root, they're holy. But if those branches are broken off, they lose that status. And that's what Paul's saying. And Paul is drawing very clearly on an Old Testament metaphor that's present in the book of Hosea, present also in Jeremiah. Jeremiah eleven sixteen says this, the Lord once called you, speaking of Israel, he says, a green olive tree, beautiful with good fruit, but with the roar of a great tempest, he will set fire to it and its branches will be consumed. So Paul here is using an Old Testament metaphor, going back to Jeremiah 11, referring to Israel as that olive tree. They were a beautiful olive tree, a green one, good fruit, bearing fruit, that root, the patriarchs, they were holy, they were good. But as time went on, they rebelled. And in particular, in Jeremiah 11, they turned to idolatry. And so branches were broken off. And so Paul is here saying nothing new or unusual. It was typical in the reading of the Old Testament to see periods of time where Jews were cut off because of their unbelief, their rebellion, because of their idolatry. And now Paul says they've rejected the Messiah. And so some of those branches, just as in the days of old, have been broken off. But you Gentiles, you were a wild olive shoot. You weren't part of that green olive tree in Jeremiah 11. You were grafted in, grafted into what? You were grafted in to Israel among the others, among the remnant, and now share in the nourishing root of the tree. So the promises given to the patriarchs now apply to the Gentiles. This all connects back to Romans 9. Remember how he started Romans 9. Not all who are descended from Israel are of Israel. Your genetic descent is not what matters. But he says in Romans and in Galatians, the children of Israel, the true children of Abraham, are those who share in the faith of Abraham. And so Gentiles have been grafted in. They are now part of the descendants of Abraham. They are quite literally by definition as children of Abraham. They are now part of Israel. That is absolutely the implication of what Paul is saying here in his reference to Jeremiah 11, that Gentiles are now included into the tree, the tree of Israel that connects to those patriarchs. Now, what is the lesson from this? Do not be arrogant toward the branches. Again, this connects back to those circumstances, Jews and Gentiles trying to coexist here in the church at Rome. And the issue here is that Gentiles are now puffed up in pride. He says, listen, this isn't your home. This isn't your family. You've been adopted into this family. You've been grafted in as it were, but do not be arrogant towards those original branches. If you all remember, you don't support the patriarchs. You don't support the promises. When we say patriarchs, think about the promises given to Abraham, starting in Genesis 12, that through him, through his seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. You don't support those promises. They support you. And then he says, you're going to come to the conclusion that Israel was broken off so that I might be grafted in. He says, that's true. That is absolutely one way to look at it. And when you look at it that way, that is a humbling position. 
God didn't graft me in because I'm so high and mighty and great and good. He grafted me in in his mercy and others were cast off and it made room for me. Branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in according to the promise and sovereignty of God. That's what we studied in Romans chapter 9. That's absolutely true. So don't be arrogant toward the branches, Paul says. Listen, we mentioned this on Friday. Anti-Semitism has no place in Christian thought. We have a heart that desires that Jews come back to the, the to Israel, be reincorporated into the family through faith. But they've been cut off for now, and by God's mercy, we've been grafted in. Now, on what basis are some cast off and others included? And that's what Paul gets into in the second part of verse 20 here. They were broken off. Why? Because of their unbelief. Now, we mentioned on Friday a particular reading of Romans 11 that says Jews will be saved, all Jews will be saved, regardless of their faith or belief in the Messiah. That is absolutely not true. Paul makes it clear that your inclusion in Israel, your reckoning as a child of Abraham, is on the basis of your sharing in the faith of Abraham. That has been pointed out so many times in Paul, in both Romans and in Galatians. You can go back and watch many videos that address this. Israel was cut off. Jews, ethnic Jews were cut off because they didn't believe. They didn't believe. And we are included. We stand fast because we do believe. We do have faith. So do not become proud. Again, a hearkening back to do not be arrogant. But fear. But fear. See, our position in the family is not one that causes us to boast or be proud or to put others down, but to recognize that it is only by God's grace that we stand here and we live in fear. We take this seriously. We do not take it for granted because if God didn't spare Israel, the natural branches, neither will he spare you. If we fall away because of unbelief, we will be cut off just as well. So Paul concludes, don't ignore the kindness and severity of God, severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards us provided we continue in his kindness. So our faith is something that must be upheld and continued. We must live it out, continue to walk on that path. And if we do, we'll continue to be members of that tree. But if we don't, we too can be cut off, as he says. And Jews, if they don't continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. Now, this is such an important statement. This is so important. If Israel is going to be saved, Paul tells us exactly how they will be saved. If they do not continue in their unbelief, they will be grafted in. This is so important because we're going to come to a verse that talks about in this way, all Israel will be saved. Well, what way, Paul, are you talking about? Well, he tells us if they do not continue in their unbelief, they will be grafted in for God has the power to graft them in again. And again, he concludes by pointing out the humility we should have. If we have been grafted in contrary to nature, how much easier could they be grafted in to back into their own olive tree? Paul certainly wants that. He's certainly looking forward to the day that Israel comes back in faith. In fact, he's working in his ministry to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy, to bring them back into the family. That's what Paul wants. That's what we should desire as Christians, not to have a position of arrogance or prejudice, but a position of compassion and love, and ultimately a position of fear. Thank you for joining us today on Begin in the Word. It's my hope that just as you have begun today in the Word of God, You'll live out today in the Word of God.